And then I'm going to go to school. I'm going to work. And then I'm going to move out. And my stepdad, like, right there, like, he just bursted out laughing. And he was like, Nadie en tu familia cree en ti. He was like, Nadie en de aquí, Nadie en de aquí, like, cree en ti. What is up, everyone? I'm your host, Alan Iced, and this is Noche de Pendejadas, your favorite talk show turned podcast, and donde yo traigo a tus influencers favoritos para chismear y posiblemente sacarles sus trapitos al sol. Please help me welcome tonight's guest, Sofia! Hello, hello. ¿Cómo estás, amiga? I'm good. I am okay. so excited to have you here, you guys. Si ustedes no saben, this episode has been a while in the making yeah. i think yo te mandé un mensaje que el mes pasado it was in november in november mm -hmm. oh, yo pensé que le mandé el, el mensaje <laughs> en diciembre wey, pero no fue en noviembre yeah. but the reason why we waited two months you guys is because i had a pre-film for december right because right. i think i stopped filming the episodes como la segunda semana de diciembre because i had to put on my christmas tree if you guys don't know i film in my sala aquí como estamos estamos en, en mi sala principal so by the time i hit you up Like, I already had everything recorded no, yeah. for the month of December. Yeah. So I was like, you know what, amiga? Me vas a tener que esperar aunque sea un mes. Y pues aquí la tenemos. I'm yeah. so excited to have you here. Porque yo cuando posteé on TikTok asking my followers que a quien querían ver en el mm -hmm. podcast, the comments were flooded. Que Sofía, que Sofía, que Sofía. Y yo dije, ¿sabes qué chinga su madre? Si toda la gente la quiere conocer, pues yo también. How exciting. Yeah. How are you? ¿Cómo está? ¿Cómo estuvo el vuelo? ¿Y cómo estuvo todo eso, amiga? Mm, I'm good. The flight was good. It was actually my first time on a plane uh, shut up you've yeah, never traveled never <gasps> well i've traveled like to i've been here once 13 years ago and then cali but we drove oh so okay, it was okay. my first time on a plane it was really it was really scary were you nervous i was nervous but i ended up falling asleep so it was like okay. i honestly feel like the landing though is scarier than like when you're like taking off really for me it was taking off the really? our landing was really smooth and even my boyfriend said he was like oh that was a really smooth landing okay so maybe because you got a smooth landing i feel like personally me you guys whenever i do fly siento que cuando like we take off i'm just like i literally close my eyes as soon as i see the like the fucking plane moving i'm like <laughs> que sea lo que Dios quiera. And as soon as it lands, I get so paranoid because yeah. it starts shaking crazy. Also, I want to talk about something, you guys. I know, que puta vergüenza. <laughs> Ayer me mandó un mensaje, Sophie. Tuvo unos problemitas con el hotel que le había agarrado. Cuéntanos oh un poquito más gosh. de eso, amiga. Okay, so we got to the hotel and right away, my, I feel like my boyfriend always knows everything before me because he told me, he was like, um, like, this looks a little sketchy. Yeah. And I, I literally told him, I was like, be grateful. Like, why are you, like, because the doors were, like, all blacked out. Like, it was. It like, was in the little, hallway? No, like, the entrance. The entrance oh, to the hotel. Shit. And that's when he was like, oh, it's a little sketchy. And I was like, no, it's not. And then we checked in. We're, like, going up to the hotel. And the, the elevator gave me, like, scary movie vibes. So I was like, okay. <gasps> You're like, ¿a dónde me trajo I Alan? And I opened the door and... I just looked like at the fridge and the fridge had like I don't know if it was food but it was just like super dirty there was like the the shower, the shower yeah, there yeah. was hairs like little little hairs all over someone's yeah. rasurándose yeah, before you got there the, the, like, the, the oh lady my. that was cleaning up yes, that's crazy you know really what's dirty. crazy you guys this is the second time I have got in that hotel the funny thing is I used to get the hotels closer to mm -hmm. LA oh. but the thing is pues yo no vivo en Los Angeles I live in OC so mm -hmm. a lot of the time like if I would tell guests like oh be here at 12 el tráfico would make yeah. them get here at 1 So the last time I booked a hotel on that, yo cuando miré las fotos from the outside, hasta se mira diferente el edificio, right? Yeah. Like in the pictures when I booked it, you guys, y las fotos que me mandó ella, yo dije, nada que ver, güey, parece que I booked a hotel six. And <laughs> as soon as she sent me the pictures, yo me sentí con mucha vergüenza, you guys, because I hadn't gone to see the um, hotel. So cuando ella me los mandé, yo dije, no mames, ¿de dónde la mandé? Yeah. And as soon as, you know, she sent me that, we got it situated. Yeah. Pero lo bueno que ya tienes un hotel, better, right? No, yeah, but before that, so well first I was like super super scared to text you I was like I'm scared like I felt bad yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. oh my god like I don't want to come off ungrateful you know 
so I, like the only person I told I, I had texted my friend I was like girl like I texted to her the message I texted you I was like, like does it sound good like yeah, approve it before like, I send it yeah and she was like send it I was like I'm nervous she was like okay fine I'm gonna email him right now I was like stop and then we got another hotel and then we went to that hotel I had booked it online like super quick they charged me everything we went to that hotel and then something went wrong and they couldn't take us she was like I can't take you guys and I literally just burst it into tears because I was like, okay, I'm in LA. I spent all my money. Like, it was just so bad. I had a breakdown. And then my boyfriend was like, it's okay, we'll figure it out. And then he had found the other hotel. We went there. They were so nice. The hotel is so, so nice. So it was. Lo bueno que they made it, you guys. I yeah. know. Yesterday when you texted me, I was going to film like in five minutes because también yeah. ayer grabé el podcast. And as soon as I got that message, you guys, ni lo terminé de leer, güey. Yo nomás <laughs> miré las fotos, miré que the first two sentences y rapidito le llamé, you guys, because yeah. I was like, oh my God, this could not be happening. Ya te hasta vergüenza tengo from the last person that stayed there. Like, oh. I want to reach out to see if they had the same problem because I'm like, what the hell? Because when I told the friend desk, I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm not trying to be that person. Him, but I showed them the pictures that I took and I was like this looks nothing like the website and he was just like do you want another room and I was like like You're a like, different no, room uh? I was like you know what I'll take the refund but thank you so I don't know if the other rooms were the same and our room was at the very end of the hallway ah, like, te mandaron hasta la chingada, amiga. that's crazy you guys for sure for sure la última vez que agarramos hotel ahí you guys pero lo bueno que estás aquí verdad yes. yo quiero empezar antes de que empecemos con el chisme amigas yo les voy a dar el micrófono a Sophie para que ella nos diga un poquito más de quién es y qué hace my name is Sofía I'm 20 years old. I'm a content creator that has to do with everything beauty, so like makeup, outfits, and I also vlog. I just kind of post my life. Like I like to bring you guys along with whatever I do. And then on the side, I'm a freelance makeup artist. So for like quinceañeras, weddings, bautizos, like toda la cosa. Divorcios, a lo que ustedes <laughs> quieran, amiga, para lo que se quieran maquillar, aquí está yeah, la Sophie. Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty much that's what I do. Whenever I see your content, I feel like I can see a little bit, like you said, like beauty, you know, fashion, yeah. lifestyle, vlogs. So, si ustedes quieren un poquito de todo, ahí está la Sophie. So, ya después de que saben lo que ella hace, you guys, yo quiero irme derechito con el chisme. Y voy a empezar con la primera pregunta que yo le pregunto a todos. How was Sophie growing up? ¿Cómo era tu infancia, amiga? Growing up, well, I grew up with divorced parents. So right off the bat, my my childhood was very imbalanced. Like okay. right off the bat, grew up with divorced parents. Um, the little girl in me was always like I was always outside. Like girl, I was riding bikes with no shoes in la tierra. Like I was literally always outside. And then at school, like with the friends that I would make at school, I was very 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 like friendly con cada quien. But the other side of me was like very like reserved. Very reserved. Very like lonely because you know i had divorced parents yeah so it was like the other side of me was very lonely the the side that i didn't show you know like the mental side of me yeah. was felt that way but then the side that i put out was very like oh i like to go outside i like to be with my friends like all that type of stuff how old were you when your parents got divorced i was i believe i was two i only have one memory of my parents together what is that? Yo quiero saber. It's, At two I years was, old? Yeah. Oh, I shit. Was, that's why I'm like, I was two, and then I'm I'm not sure if they got back when I was like three, four. Like they were trying maybe yeah, back and forth. Yeah, but I only have literally one memory with them, and it was around Halloween time, and I had a little cat costume, and I remember that the tail fell off, and I ran downstairs, and my mom and dad were just like standing together and i was like can you guys fix my tail and that's literally the only memory i have of my mom and dad together. oh my god that's crazy yeah. because it wasn't even like a full-on memory yeah, it was just, just like that, that little, little moment mm -hmm. that's crazy so obviamente nos cuentas de que tus papás se divorciaron cuando tú tenías como dos tres años um en qué momento en tu vida did you realize that like oh shit my parents are divorced because i feel like since they divorced very early on it almost felt like oh like this is all i know yeah. was there ever a moment on the como que te Pegó en la cholla, like, oh shit, my parents are divorced. Everyone usually has their mom and dad in their life. Mm -hmm. ¿Qué fue ese momento para ti? I feel like it was always my elementary school, like musicals. You know mm -hmm. how you would have like the little, little plays, play yeah, or los like that, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember I would always be sitting like crisscross applesauce, like they would tell us, and I would look around and I would just see all the parents, and I would be like, dang, like my parents aren't here. Like, and 
even if they were here, they wouldn't be together, you know? Like, una acá, el otro allá, huh? Yeah, and then I also realized it a lot when, um, around middle school, I was in choir, so my dad would, I would text my, because I'm a daddy's girl. Okay. Like, I am such a daddy's girl, so every concert, everything I had, like, I was texting my dad, and most of the time, he couldn't make it, because my dad, he couldn't afford to take a day off yeah. like, at all, so he wouldn't really make it, but when he would make it, he was like in his work boots, in his hat with freaking like wood. Like straight out of work, like, yeah. Yes, yeah. so those were little moments where I realized, I was like, dang, like everyone has their little like parents que les trajo flores, balloons. And for me, it was just so, so hard. It was so different. It was like, like empty. Was like so, everyone was all like, yes, oh, Mijo, you're doing but, a great job. Or, no yes, solita, yeah. I remember like at the end, like all the kids, they would give the kids like a chance to run to their parents. And I remember like just standing around, like seeing everyone. And it felt so lonely, Aww. like super, super You're like, lonely. I think I need to go to the restroom. Yeah, ah. I was like, mm, something's not right but that's yeah. crazy did you ever kind of like bring it up to your parents like mom like por que no van or dad por que no van or was it always just more like oh i know they can't so why even bug honestly no i've always been very like ever since i grew up my feelings my emotions my sadness my happiness i never shared it like at all so no, I never really told them anything. I always held that in. I always like kept those little thoughts to myself yeah. and just dealt with it. Nos cuentas un poquito that growing up, you know, you were a daddy's girl straight on. Um, how was your relationship with your mom? Were you close to her or were you a little bit more distant or was it toxic? Um, honestly, I remember when I was younger, um, I was pretty close with my mom. Like I would every single Christmas, I would decorate the tree with her. I would decorate like the Christmas tree. Yeah. I would decorate the house with her. I would help her clean. We always had puppies. Always. So I was always helping her with like the puppies. Or my mom likes to garden. She okay. loves like flowers and stuff. So I was always out there like gardening with her. When I was younger, I feel like I had a very strong attachment to my mom. Sometimes I would cook with my mom. And I would run to the bathroom and I would cry because I was like, I don't want my mom to die. And then I would Aww. run back and I would act like nothing happened. And I would I'll be having it. my crying sessions yes. in the restroom. Like I would go, I would cry. I was like, I don't ever want a boyfriend. I never want to move out. Like I, I want to be with my mom forever. But then once I started like growing a little bit more, because I have a stepdad. Okay. And he's been in my life ever since I was like five years old. And so once I started growing and realizing like, oh... Because they're very toxic. So once okay. I started realizing what toxic was, and my mom had also got diagnosed with cancer when I was pretty young still too. And like in that period of time when things started getting toxic, when she was diagnosed, I feel like my relationship with her just kind of like... Became toxic as well. Yeah, like it just like from one moment to the other, it kind of felt like it was literally gone. Like I didn't really talk to my mom, like... And nothing. Were anything. you guys like fight a lot verbally or yes. was it just more like you guys just got distant? No, yeah. Fighting with my mom started at a very, very, very young age. Like oh, I was, I think I was like in elementary, middle school and I was like packing my bags. Like I was like, I want to go with my dad. Like I don't want to be here. We were just super like, I don't know. It was so weird. Like there's, I feel like there's not a lot of words that I could explain to it because it was, I was such a young girl that I didn't even understand what yeah. it was. Like I was like, what is it? Like, I don't know. I, or I remember like my friends in middle school, they would tell me little things like, oh, I was so sick that my mom had to shower me or, oh, like my mom this, my mom that. And I would always be like, what? Like, how can you be that close to your mom? Like, I never understood it. I was always like, whoa, like. You're like, my, and mom, my mom and my mom pela. Like ah, yeah, you're like, like, what do you mean your mom yes. is all attentive? Yeah. I was like, me and my mom aren't like that. So it was very weird. It was very weird. Did you ever feel like maybe, maybe now as an adult, you can understand, you know, mm -hmm. do you ever feel like, oh, maybe because she was going through so much in her toxic relationship, did you ever feel like maybe she was taking it out on you? Um, I feel like yes. I okay. feel like yes, because me and my mom have been through a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. And for a while, I held a really bad grudge, like a really, really, really bad grudge. But now that I'm older, I look back and I think about it and I'm like, you know what? This is my mom's first life, too. Yeah. Like, this is my mom's first year being, I don't, I don't know, like her first year being this old, her first year doing this, her first year doing that. So I look back at it and I'm like, just like any other person, my mom didn't really know, like yeah. you know. So at first, yes, I held a grudge, but 
now I'm, I'm more understanding. I feel like that comes with age too because yeah. I had an amazing relationship with my mom, but it was always very rocky with my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, like exactly like you, like I would resent my dad even for like the littlest things. Mm-hmm. Like I always say this example, but it's because it was that like crazy growing up. Like my mom couldn't sit my dad and me in the same table to eat. Me and my dad mm-hmm. stopped having like a proper meal together because even him chewing his food would piss me off so much. Yeah. And I feel like now as an adult, you know, aside from that and then like the other things that I feel like he was never there for me, um, now as an adult, como que estoy igual que tú, como yeah. que pienso, digo, ¿sabes qué? He also had his traumas. He was also trying to live his life and figure out his life. Like, I can't continue having this grudge towards him because al fin del día, los que salimos afectados somos uno, ¿verdad? Oh, like, yes. si seguimos con ese odio en nuestro corazón, pues puro odio vamos a cargar con yes. nosotros el resto de la vida. So, nos cuentas de que tuviste esta relación very rocky with your mom mm-hmm. and you also tell us that you know you had your stepdad very early on in your life did your dad remarry or did he get with someone else after too um yes my dad got with my stepmom so i have a stepmom too how's your relationship with your step parents like tienes una relación bonita or apenas hablan my relationship with my stepdad is like just like you told me like yo en verlo comer like it pisses me off yeah. like i breathing the same air like the same room as him i can't do it like i have been through so much with him and i feel like he as a person has put me through so much and when i was younger we were super close super close but como te dije like growing up when you start understanding more i was like you know what the way this person treats me is not okay yeah. like it's not okay And like hasta el día de hoy, there's been things that he says he does. And I'm like, you know what? I'm grown now. Yeah. Like, I'm not the five year old little girl that you used to control and you used to like. Manipular like, you had yeah, yeah. me as yes, but now that I'm grown, I'm like, I'm grown. I'm a woman and this person, I can't. Like, I cannot. Y luego aparte de lo que te hacía sufrir a ti, pues obviamente mirabas cómo trataba a tu mamá and yeah. you're like, no, peor. Mm-hmm. Fue el caso que te trataba a ti como princesa y a tu mamá del chongo, pero no, eran las dos que las trataba mal. Yes. Do you feel like you have that same type of relationship with your dad's um, partner? Honestly, the day that I met my stepmom, I loved her. Like, okay. I loved her. And she had two daughters. They were super young. The one was two and one was just a couple months. And she took the the older one, the two year old. And that day, like I've I had always wanted a little sister, like always. So that day when I met her, I loved them. And my dad, I remember my dad was brushing his teeth, putting cologne on, and he looked at me and he was like, "Remember, mommy, she's just a friend. She's just a friend." And I was like, "Okay." And then I met her, and like de ahí, yo era su chicle. Like Aww. literally, I was. Leli, because her name is Leslie. So okay. I her, me llevas a Walmart, me llevas acá, me llevas acá. Like, I was super close with her. As I got older, or even, like, after that a little bit, the celos came. Like, once she moved in with my dad. Oh, okay, The okay. celos came, and, like, that that whole point of my life, like, for a few years, that was super, super hard. Because, like I mentioned, I'm a daddy's girl. Like, I am super, super attached to my dad. My dad is my world. So, seeing, you know, other girls have the part of my dad that I couldn't have because like I would always think about it and I was I would always be like it's just not fair like it's not fair that you know they get to say good morning good night like birthdays holidays like why do they get them why do they get him and not me yeah Yeah, I was like but it's not my fault like you know like little stuff like that so there was a few issues here and there our relationship like was kind of rocky but Today, where we're at, I love my stepmom. Like, I see her as a mom. Literally. Do you feel like, you know, growing up with your parents divorced and with everything going on, do you feel like that affected you in the way that maybe your whole childhood you felt almost like there's no structure? Oh, yes. Like, I feel like that my whole childhood growing up with, like, divorced parents, like, my toxic stepdad or my toxic this, my toxic that... To this day, I have trauma. Like, I have really bad trauma to in this what day. Way? I feel like in... Even in ways where, I, like, that I treat my boyfriend sometimes or in ways where... I don't know. It's, I just... It's certain ways in me that sometimes, you know, I can't really explain. But it's like, sometimes I'll see a video and it'll trigger a panic attack. Like, if I see a video with, like, 
a young family, like a family, like giving so much love to their kid, like I will break down like really bad. <laughs> yeah, because you're like, wow, th- that's so normal, but it was never normal yes, to me. It definitely caused me a lot. Like it, it made me struggle in so many ways. Do you feel like even to this day, them being divorced affects you in any way? So to this day, no, I feel like it doesn't affect my re- like. Wanting my parents together, that changed a long time ago. Like, um, having my siblings and having that love, like, growing a sibling love. Because I always wanted little siblings. So, growing a sibling love with the kids that my stepmom had, with my dad, I feel like that cured everything. Was it hard, though, you know? Because I feel like a lot of people, um, especially when you have, like, half-siblings, they tend to be like, no, pues no es mi hermano porque no viene del mismo papá y la mamá. Was it ever, like, a thing for you or, like, straight from the bat? You were like, no, these are my siblings. Aunque no sean de la misma mamá, pero vienen del mismo papá. Oh, yeah. Straight from the beginning. Like, to this day, I call them my sisters. Like, my sister and my brother. Only two of them are step. The two that I mentioned earlier. They are my stepsisters. We don't have the same parents at all. But the other two, we have the same dad, just different moms, obviously. But, no. Since the beginning, like, my sisters are my sisters. My brother is my brother. Like, the blood means literally nothing to me. I mean, my dad has literally raised them since they were in diapers. And then you've been knowing them since estaban bien chiquitos. Yes. So, obviamente, creciste con ellos, creciste mm. este amor. Quiero hablar un poquito. Nos cuentas de, you know, um, your toxic relationship with your mom growing up. Y también ayer me estabas contando que a los 18 años te fuiste de casa. Mm. You got kicked out. Cuéntanos un poquito más de eso. ¿Cómo pasó? And what led up to you getting kicked out? My relationship with my mom was very... Like, I knew that it was so easy for her to get rid of me. So that, yeah. that was a reason that I struggled a lot to have a relationship with her. Is because I knew that anything I do wrong, like, she's so quick to... Okay, get out of my house. Get out of my house. Get out of my house. So it was my 18th birthday and... In this point in my life, I was going through, like, a healing stage. Oh, I healed in some wrong ways, some right ways, but um, I had went out on my 18th birthday, and I got, like, super, super blacked out drunk, like, very, very drunk. And I got home, and as soon as I opened the door, like, my mom was already there. I don't know. She, she knew because I went live. I went live um. while I was drunk, so that's how she found out. And as soon as I opened the door, she was, like, right there, and she just grabbed me by the chongo. She took off my shoes. She took off my jacket. Yes, see, she was, like, get in the car. She drove me to my dad's because she knows that I am a daddy's girl. Like, any issue that me and my mom have, like, she's always... Telling my dad, like, yeah. always, like, okay, I'm going to send you to your dad's. I'm going to send you to your dad's. So this time, she actually drove me. It was, like, 2 in the morning, and my dad had lived, like, 45 minutes away, oh, and shit. she drove She's me. She's like, yes. I am waiting. Hoy se me va de la casa. She was, like, get in the car, and then we went to my dad's house, and that day was actually the day that I confessed to her everything that I'm saying now. Because I was super drunk, and my dad was hugging me. It was my dad, my stepmom, my, my mom, and my brother. Like, a whole family reunion. And they were like, why are you like this? Like, why are you... A las tres de la mañana. Yes. <gasps> so, los levantaste, yes, tu I papá y tu... Up. Yes. Tu stepmom bien and dormidos. And even when I got to the house, I had threw the door open, and I was like, where's my sister? I want my sister. Because <laughs> like, you were still drunk. Yes. Todavía andabas peda. Oh, yes. my God. So I was like, I want my sister. Like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I want my sister. Where is she? I want my sister. <laughs> Sure, yes. maybe another shot, please. <laughs> ah. No, literally, I was like, bring her to me now. No, I was so mad. But and then they were like, Why are you acting like this? Like, what is it? And I just like solté todo. Like I was like, Oh mom, like, do you think I don't remember on my 13th birthday when you didn't say happy birthday to me? Or do you think I don't remember? Like, like I had just said so many things. Like everything you had bottled up. Yes, yeah. I had said so many things. And my mom, my mom struggles a lot to understand. Like a lot. So she was very just like, okay, if you feel that way about me, then get out of my house. And everything that you own is mine. Everything under my roof is staying. After you like told her how yes. you felt. Oh shit. Yeah. So she was like, if you want to, if you want to go through with this, you're not taking anything. You're not taking clothes. You're not taking makeup because makeup was my life. Yeah. And I had my whole vanity there. So she was like telling me that I wasn't going to take anything. And I was like, I don't want anything. Like, if it has to do with you and it has to do with under your roof, then I don't want it. Yeah, like, keep it. Yeah. Like, you're not understanding where I'm coming yeah, from. Yeah, I was like, literally, I was like, if you can't understand that I'm telling you this from the heart and you, you're, you like, just throwing me out like that, then throw me out. Like, like as a daughter, I'm trying yeah. to get you to understand me. Yes, yeah, so I was, literally, my dad was holding my hand like this. 
like literally like this the whole time squeezing my hand and hugging me and he was like aquí te puedes quedar like he was telling my mom like because my dad didn't agree with the whole situation he was like how are you going to kick her out for getting drunk you yeah. know like she's 18 you know and i don't know like my mom like she was out my age yeah so when this, she had kids already You're like, like yeah, yeah, tenía tres, cuatro, yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. i was like i don't get it i get like like wanting to go to bailes and being very like dancing and like partying i get that from my mom my okay. mom is very like Le gusta Le gusta el by, yes yeah, right? yeah, yeah so my dad like was going off on her and he was like how are you gonna do this to her when this is all you showed her yeah like all you've taught her is to go out and to do this and to that so how are you gonna kick her out now and my mom was just very like mm, i don't care like es mi casa. yes si very, quiere actuar really, así, que yes. Se la, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then i was like I was like, see, like, I just remember, like, telling her, like, you see, like, you don't understand. And I was, like, bawling my eyes out, screaming at her. And then my brother just, like, jumped in. And he was like, don't, don't yell at my mom. Like, he screamed in my face. My older brother. Oh, okay. Oh, también fue con tu mamá y yeah, contigo. Yeah, he drove okay. us. Yeah, and he was just like, don't, don't yell at my mom. So I always felt like it was the whole family against like me. Like the whole house against yes, you. It was always, growing up, it was always everybody against me. To, to up until a couple months ago when I moved out. It was like everybody would sit at the table. I was sitting in one chair and it was just everyone attacking me, attacking me, attacking me. Like it was always like that. So when my brother yelled at me, I wasn't surprised, but it still hurt a lot. Yeah. I was you're like, like, you're the cherry on top. Yes, yeah. literally. And that's when I was like, you know what? I just want nothing to do with them at all. And then three months later, I started going through a lot with at my dad's household too, because it was like, I always, it just, I still felt left out because it was very much, you know, like this is my dad's family yeah. and now I'm here. And know? then like you never lived with him. Yeah. So obviously you're like coming into a house que no se siente como un hogar yes. para ti. Even though like my stepmom did, my stepmom and my dad, they did do everything to make me feel welcome. I had no clothes. My stepmom gave me all her clothes. Most Aww, of her clothes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She gave me clothes. She would take me out. She would let me use her car. Like she did so much for me while I lived there but a part of me still felt very like like left out this isn't home yeah it just felt very it felt the same to be honest todo eso pasó dices que on your 18th birthday verdad mm -hmm. pues que bonito regalo que te dio tu mamá <laughs> verdad know. she's like salte de mi casa <laughs> so obviamente you know you get kicked out y empieza a vivir con tu papá nos cuentas que tuviste un, uno que otro problema trying to adapt en tu nueva casa como estuvo tu relación con tu mamá en esos meses que no viviste con ella tuviste contacto or was it kind of just more like you know what like I'm out of your house we're not even speaking It was like that. Oh, really? Yes. Like, like cold turkey. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I didn't talk to her at all. And that time was my high school graduation. So within those months that I got kicked out, a month after was my high school graduation. And I remember I had no contact with my mom. I didn't talk to her at all, like for nothing. And then I remember it was like, I think a week or two before my graduation. And the whole family had left the house except my dad. So it was me and my dad. All the kids were gone and my stepmom was gone. And I was in my room and I just, well, I was in my sister's room because it was my sister's room. And I just moved in with her. And I remember just like, I was really sad because I was like, dang, like my mom went all out for my brother and sister when they graduated and like she's not even going to be there for mine. So I remember I like, oh, I'm getting emotional. But I remember I had walked into the sala and like I was already like bawling and my dad, he had his iPad on him because my dad is um, the owner of his business. So he's yeah. always like, like working yes, yeah, 24 seven. Yeah. So he had his iPad on him and like I just came down the hallway and he like looked at me and he like threw the iPad. Like, he just threw it off at him. And he was like, at the end, he's like, what's wrong? And I just, like, laid on his lap. And I just, like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm getting emotional. But I just, like, cried. I was like, oh, I'm just. <laughs> no, you're good here. I was just like, I'm just really sad. Like, I'm, my mom isn't a mom to me right now, you know? My dad was worried. He was like, mija, like, um, si no te curas, like, Um, I'm gonna take you to therapy and like and my dad is very against like medications or like anything that has to do with like anxiety depression like he's you know he's a traditional Mexican dad yeah. so he they struggle to believe in that but that day he was like te voy a llevar a therapy like you need this you need that and it just hurt it hurt a lot but yeah and then after a while like I broke the silence I was like you know what you reached out yeah I reached out to my mom because I started going through things at my dad's too Like mentally, 
And I just wanted my vanity. Like, I wanted my makeup. Like, what made you happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I called my mom, and I was like, can we talk? And she was like, of course we can talk. And then I went over, and she was like, she just, like, had a long talk with me, but she was like, so are you going to come back? And I was like, yeah. And then she was like, if you come back, there's a lot of rules. And I was 18, and I had never had curfew. But when I moved back, she was like, you're not going to go out till 9. You're not going to go out on weekends. Like, she had set the rules high. Hi. You're yeah. like, oh, then I don't want to come yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had started telling me. She was like, oh, and you're going to pay rent, and I'm going to have your location, and this and that. And my dad was like, okay, no. She's not paying rent, and you're not going to have her location, because no. My dad has always protected me. Yeah. So he was like, having her location is just such an invasion of her privacy. That's what my dad has always thought. So he told her no. And then my dad was like, she's not going to pay rent yet until she graduates. Like, after she graduates, okay, you could Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, because you hadn't graduated no. yet? Oh, wait. At that point, I did. Oh, fuck. I'm getting the timeline mixed up. I did. I had graduated. But I don't remember why then. I don't remember why. But it had to do something like... Like, you were still young. Oh, like, no. let her figure out her life. I, I remember what it was now. He told me that I had to get into school again. Okay. Like, beauty school. They always knew that beauty was my thing. So, he was like, no, she's not going to pay rent yet because she's going to do that. You know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like, primero deja que she gets yeah. on her feet. Y ya cuando pueda ganar su dinerito bien, yes. que empiece a pagar sus like biles. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. But my dad was always the type, like, no, she's not going to pay rent yet. And... He was always protecting me, pues. But, yeah, so that's how I ended up back at my mom's. That's crazy, you know. Lo bueno yeah. que ya ahorita, hoy en día, do you feel like you have, like, a better relationship with her? Um, I feel like I do. Even this past year was hard when I lived with her. Because I just moved out, like, four months ago. Oh, shit. Yeah. How was that? It's amazing. Like, ¿Cómo pasó todo eso? Yo quiero saber un poquito uh, de ese chisme, amiga. Like, did you have months of planning it? Or were you just like, you know what? Me voy a mover y chingue su madre lo que pase. Me salgo de aquí. Okay, so this is kind of like a story. It has, like, timeline parts. It has a couple parts that goes to it. But after that whole, like, bronca with my family, when I moved back with my mom few months later, I think a year later, um, I actually moved in with my boyfriend. Oh, like, shit. Okay. Yeah, so moved in with his family because the sleepover, it was when my mom finally like, okay, the curfew was gone. The, she was like, like I just give up. Yeah, yeah, were yeah. Gone. yeah. So I started sleeping over at my boyfriend's house a lot. And then I had a job. I was a nanny. So I was working a lot, Monday to Friday, nine hours a day. Oh, and so it was, it was like a set nanny yeah, schedule. Okay. And then it was like an hour there, an hour back. So technically my work days were 11 hours, like 11 hours every day. And so it was a lot for me. And mentally, like I started falling downhill a lot because... I struggle with anxiety, and I'm on anxiety medication, and the medication that I was on at the time, because there is a difference with medications. One will work for you, but the other will make you, like, suicidal. It will completely change who you are. So it's it's really scary when you're on, getting on medications and stuff like that, and I was on one that wasn't working for me, and I was getting sleep deprived, like, the reason I'm on meds, it all started because I struggle a lot to sleep. My anxiety hits at night. Like, at night, I'm, like, pacing. I'm freaking out. Like, I can't sleep. So that's why I was on them. Mentally, I was drained because of the job. I wasn't sleeping. And then the medication, yeah. I didn't know it was the wrong one. So I kept taking it, and it kept making me worse. And so my suegra, my boyfriend's mom, she was like, you know what? Like, why don't you stay with us? That way, I, like, I can take care of you. She was like, why don't you live with us while you're going through this? That way, like we can take care of you like we can help you because she knows that like in my household it was like, like no one like you yeah. were free for all you're on yeah. your own yeah, yeah yeah so she was like oh just come move in with us and i was like oh i was like okay so it started like poco a poquito i started taking my stuff little by little and then a little after i moved in like my mental health just got super 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 bad like i was extremely sleep sleep deprived i wasn't sleeping at all like my boyfriend would take me to the hospital because like I couldn't even drive my car oh, because shit. it was like I had thoughts of like just like, you know, Driving yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. or like he had to hide like Advil, Tylenol, his pocket and like the little pocket knife, like, yeah. things like that. Like he had to hide all of that. Like, it was extremely, extremely, extremely bad. So I went through all that and then um, I got off the medication. I got on a new one and that one started helping me. That one literally like cured me. Yeah, like, it helped me so much. The suicidal thoughts went away. It was so bad to the point where, like, I would wake up in the middle of the night crying, like, 
but like a screaming cry and like, like a panic cry yes. yeah, 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 and my yeah. boyfriend would like squeeze me and he would be like it's okay like it's okay like, calm down yeah. like i'm here yeah, yeah, yeah but i just wanted to like scream louder and louder like i wanted help like yeah. i like, you were screaming for help yes, literally yeah, yeah yeah yes it was super bad so then i started getting better and then my dad this whole time i was scared of telling my dad that i lived with him oh because you were taking things de poquito a poquito yes. right Mira, tu mamá le habías dicho? no you my were just like i'm sleeping the, over yeah my mom knew that i was sleeping over every day but like she knew knew when i took my vanity oh she's yeah. like that's when it's serious and You're i had lied i was like oh um I want to put my vanity away and Alexis's dad said that I could keep it in their storage. <laughs> and you're like in his room. <laughs> ah, literally the storage so, is the yeah, room. Yeah, so I had lied and then, but my mom's so stupid. Yeah. Like she knows. Like ya captaba, ya yeah, she saw she, it coming. Yeah, she yeah. knew, yeah, but my dad didn't. And then this is when I wanted to get into beauty schools and I was really scared of telling my dad, but my, my, my boyfriend and his family were like, it's the right thing to do. Like yeah. you have to tell your dad, you know? So I called my dad and I was like, Dad, can we can we talk? Like, I want to talk to you. And he was like, okay. And I met up with him and he was like, so what's happening? And I was like, well. And then I told him, I was like, I live with my boyfriend and I'm going through this. I feel really sad, but I want to go to beauty school and I want to do this. And like, I just need your help a little bit. And he was mad. He was like. Well, the first thing you're going to do is move out of his house. And the second thing you're going to do is you're going to go to school. And then the third thing you're going to do is you're going to work. And you're going to, like... Start paying yeah. for yourself. Yes. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Toda, like, una, una mujer. Una mujer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at first, he was mad. Like, he was like, so what do you want from me? Like, what, what, what like, did you come here? Aquí? Yeah. Si ya lo hiciste. And at this time, my mom was buying her first house. Like, she was looking around for a house with her and my stepdad. Okay. And that was the last thing I wanted. I was like, the last thing I want is to move back to my childhood trauma. Yeah. Like, I don't want to live with them at all. But my dad had told me, he was like, you know what? Because be my beauty school was only seven months. Okay, so, okay. so was, it was quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. he was like, live with them for the seven months, and then I'm going to give you two months to make money. And then by the third month, you better be out of your mom's house or I'm not going to help you no more. Yeah. That was kind of what he said. Like, that me. was a plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I was like, okay. I had already told my mom I didn't want to live with her. I was like, look for a house with one less room because I don't want to live like, with Like, no me cuenten. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I was like, okay, well, my dad told me this and I told my mom this. So I was like, great. Like, now I have to go back. I have to talk to my mom. Because my dad said, he was like, de aquí te vas a la casa de tu mamá. He's like, y hablas con ella. So that's exactly what I did. I went, I was like, can I talk to you? And she was like, yeah, but you're going to wait for your stepdad to get home. And your brother. They got there and it was literally like this. Like I was sitting in a chair and they were all sitting right there. And they were like, so what? And I was like, oh, well, I, I am. After all, I am going to go with you guys. And my stepdad said like so many things to me that this was my breaking point with him. This is the point with him where I was like, all right, you're nothing to me. Like you mean literally nothing to yeah. me. So he sat there and he was like, oh, y ahora resulta that you want to live with us y por qué? And I told them, I was like, well, this is my plan. Like I need to live with you guys for a little and then I'm going to go to school, I'm going to work, and then I'm going to move out. And my stepdad, like, right there, like, he just bursted out laughing. And he was like, nadie en tu familia cree en ti. He was like, nadie de aquí, nadie de aquí, like, cree en ti. He was like, y eso de que tú vas a ir a la escuela, no te creo. And he was like, I'm going to accept you to live with us, pero el día que tú no me pagas los biles, todas tus cosas caben bien en mi camioneta, y yo los tiro. Like, that's literally what he said to me. Yeah. And I, like, I broke because in that moment, I felt like the five-year-old girl I was yeah. that was helpless. Like, I couldn't stand up for myself back then. And in that moment, I couldn't either because I was like, little do they know I had already talked to my dad. Tu mamá no te estaba defendiendo tampoco? No, she was just sitting there and my brother too. Because my mom had begged me to live with them. She was like, come live with us. Like, come on, come. Like, And so I was like, my mom, like, I was bawling my eyes and I was like, my mom literally, like, begged me. And, like, I raised my voice a little bit. And, again, my brother was like, don't don't fucking yell at my mom. Don't ever raise your voice at my mom. Like, again. And, and I you're was like, like, te metes a tu cuarto. Yeah, ah, I was like, 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 I'm like, lucky. I yeah. know, like, again. So it was, like, just, like, flashbacks, like, of trauma in that moment. Like, it hurt so bad. That's crazy. It hurt yeah, yeah. so bad. So I went back to my boyfriend's house. And like, yo estaba toda aguitada. Did you call your dad right away? Like, well, I no did. me quieren aceptar ahí. No, not yet. So I went back to my boyfriend's, told him everything, told my suegra everything. Like, and my suegra has always been the type to tell me, she's like, pero tu mamá es tu mamá. Yeah. Because in that moment, oh, I was furious. Like, I was saying a lot of bad things. Like, yeah. I was 
speaking really, really, really bad, like things I shouldn't say. And she was like, pero tu mamá es tu mamá. She was yeah. like, no digas eso, you know, like, it was to a point where I even told her, I was like, con todo respeto, but like, don't tell me that. Like, I don't want to hear that, you know? Yeah. Like, I know she's my mom, but I was mad. You pero know? usted no sabe lo que sufrió. Yeah. Yeah, 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 But the thing is, my suegra went through a really similar relationship with me with her mom. So she always was the one to understand me. Like, she would always was the one to have my back. Always was the one to, like, I have such a good relationship with my suegra. Se miraba ella en ti. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she would, that's why. She would always say, pero tu mamá es tu mamá. And I would be like, okay. So I had went back with my boyfriend and then the day where I had to move out came, like to move with my mom at the house she bought. And I was like super awita. I was like, I don't want to go. Like, I do not want to go, but I promised my dad something and I have to cumplirlo. Yeah, because you were almost feeling like, damn, I'm going to go live with them and ni me quieren ahí. Yes. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I was like, okay, I, I was like, all right. Because whatever I told my dad, like, again, I'm, My dad is my world. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, all right, I have to do this for him. So I go back. I'm living there. I'm in my room 24-7, like, encerrada. I don't eat with them. I don't talk to them. Like, nothing, you know? I mean, if my mom's alone, I would, I would yeah, talk yeah, to yeah. her, you know? But like, but it was very little communication. Yes, yeah. I felt super... I felt super lonely, like super, super lonely. And then this one day came where I was on live and I was eating spicy noodles with my friend. And this was like a couple months later, like I'd say six months later. And remember, my dad had told me, you have this time and then two months and then you better be out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like six, the six month mark where my friend was over and we were eating spicy noodles and Itati had gone on my live. And for me, that was something big. Yeah. For me, I was like, oh my that, that was an i made it moment yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. you're I, like i'm getting acknowledged yeah, 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 yeah. it was like 12 a.m though it was late people were sleeping in the house but i got super excited and my friend did too she was like oh my god like Kitati, you know and then my mom texted me she's like Callate, like i have work like be quiet and i was like <laughs> oh shit i was like okay and i told my friend i was like oh we have to be quiet like my mom is trying to sleep but they were upstairs and she was like oh okay my bad i think like a minute later my stepdad texted me and he was like si no te calles, voy a bajar y voy a correr a toda la gente que tienes en tu casa, en la casa. And he was like, y acuérdate que a mí me dijiste ocho meses, así que vele buscando para dónde. <gasps> yeah. He's all contando, he all yes. has his calendar, he's like, three days to go. Yes, like literally just because I was a little loud. And again, that was like my My, like my first time yeah. going out and being like in the sala like yo me la pasaba in my room so when he sent me that and he had even involved my boyfriend because he thought it was my boyfriend with me so he's like y nomás porque tu novio es un huevón no significa que nosotros no trabajamos and right there I was like alright you don't know my boyfriend yeah. first of all barely do you know me what you know is the five year old girl that you could manipulate but you don't know me yeah. so in that moment I was like alright I was mentally checked out already, so I didn't even reply. I had just texted my mom. I sent her a screenshot, and I was like, I understand. I was being loud. Because I, I, I got to a point where I was like, you know what? I don't want issues with my mom either. Yeah. So I had sent my mom the screenshot, and I was like, this is not okay. Like, this is not okay. It's not okay for this person to talk to me like that. I told my dad, and my dad was really sad. Like, he was really hurt for me, yeah. you know? And then that's when, like, it clicked in my head right away. I was like, you know what? Like, I need to leave, like, yeah. now. Like, like I need like, to leave now. Right They're counting now. down my days. Yes. Like, yeah. And that was when I officially started getting paid with social media. Okay. So, two months later, I was out. Like, I had all my stuff. I was gone. How was that? Como era el proceso? Like, as soon uh, as you started making money, did you start looking for a place? Or como pasó yes, eso? Yes, literally. As soon as I started making money, I told my boyfriend, I was like, I'm leaving this place. Like, I'm out. I'm de aquí. Yeah, I was like, I got, like, I, I can see the income. Because I had quit my nine to five. Okay. I you were not doing nanny no more? No, I wasn't doing nannying. And then I had also worked somewhere else. But mm. I was like, no, like, I'm not doing this because I knew I wanted social media. And I have wasted so many years of my life life because of what i went through where i was 19 at the time i was like you know what like this is my time yeah like, this is my time where i can either make it or lose like, it tengo que aprovechar este momento yeah, y esta so, oportunidad. yeah yeah so i quit i literally woke up one morning looked at my boyfriend and i was like i'm not going to work and he was like babe and i was like no i'm not going i don't want to work there i don't want to do that that's not what i see for myself And he was like, okay. He's always supported me. Like, he was kind of like, you're crazy, but okay. And then I started doing my freelance makeup artist on weekends, posting my videos. And that's when I started making my first checks on social media. So then I told him, I was like, all right, I see the income. I waited two months yeah, to yeah. make sure the income was there. And I was like, I'm leaving. You know, he's my boyfriend. So I was like, I don't want to rush you to come. Because in at his house, like, son bien amable. Yeah, like, like he was comfortable. Yes, yeah, 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 like yeah. at his house, like... 
su familia se junta, like, they eat together, like, todos se juntan ahí, they talk, like, their family felt like a fam family, it feels yeah. like a family, you know, so I was like, I'm not rushing you, like, I was like, you, you have a family, and don't lose that, like, don't rush out of that fast, you know, so I was like, I'm not rushing you, and he was like, no, but I want to go, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to come with you, so we, like, sat down, we really talked, we were like, okay, you save this much, I save this much, and within the time that we're gonna wait we'll start buying stuff and then like we'll go and so we applied to in a, a place on our two-year anniversary and then we got accepted <gasps> like i think three days later and, we, and then it became real so. how did you tell your stepdad and your mom did you go and be like ¿Saben qué? Oh, Me voy. Ah. honestly i didn't even want to tell them i was like i want the day to come where I leave and I want to leave. Like, I just want that day to come. But like, always, no voy a decir nada, nomás habrá señales. Yeah, ah, with your room all empty. No, literally, because I'm very believer in, like, mal de ojo. Yeah. And malas vibras. And, pues, ahí was puras, like, malas yeah. vibras. So, I was like, you know what? I don't want to tell them. But I did tell my mom because she was right there when I got accepted, kind of. So, I grabbed my dog and I was like, this is my last rent. Because it was the day that rent was due, too. Oh, okay, okay, so okay. So, I gave okay. her my last rent and I was like, this is the last one you're getting because I'm leaving. And she was like, ah. Finally. And You're I was like, like yes, yes. Ah. I was like, yes, finally. And I'm taking my dog too. Cause I had my puppy over there. We told his family. For his family it was a little more special. Like I recorded and his mom cried. Aww. Yeah, she cried, but she was super happy for us. And she was definitely like our biggest supporter. Like all the ollas we have are because of her. Of hers. Our platos, our vasos. Like she gave us literally everything like everything we needed how did you feel in that moment obviously you know nos cuentas todo lo que has batallado you know mm -hmm. you always felt out of place how did you feel the moment you walked into your new apartment knowing that now you have the opportunity to make this new place your home i felt honestly i feel like i was a little bit in disbelief but i was i felt relief like if anything i felt relief and i had always went for my whole life like Encerrándome in my room, like I didn't want to be in the sala, I didn't want to be in the kitchen. I never even ate dinner with them, like I couldn't. I had told my boyfriend, I was like, oh my god, like I can enjoy a sala, like yeah. I can enjoy a couch with a TV and feel comfortable. And I think I took that a little too serious because a week after we got a ca our couch, yet tenía hoyo. You're like, you're enjoying it too much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I remember my boyfriend had sat down and he was like, babe, no mames. He was like, le hiciste hoyo because he like tilted. And I was like, because I would sleep there. Yeah, like, yeah, I was yeah. literally like, I loved it. I felt so at home. I had my dogs. I had like my boyfriend. And where we where we moved, um, one room is dedicated to just beauty. Like it's okay. all mine. So I just I felt so I feel so much better there. Like, you know, yeah. lo bueno que al fin del día. How long ago did you move into your new apartment? We moved like the very end of August, first of September. Oh, of last year. Yeah, so oh, okay, so apenas yeah, good. Literally. That's so good. So, obviamente, ya tienes estos mesitos viviendo yeah. a gusto, viviendo contenta. Do you feel like now, after moving out, has your relationship with your mom gotten better? I feel like it has. Like, I think I realized that the first moment I needed help cooking. Yeah. And I was like, Ama, uh, what does this mean? Like, how do I do this? I was trying to make spaghetti. Yeah, and yeah. I was yeah. Like, Ama. And that was my first moment where I was like, wow, like, I, me and my mom have just always gotten along better at a distance. Because I feel like my mom would always just feel pressure that she had to act different towards me when my stepdad was around. Yeah. So now that like I'm not around him and it can just be me and her, I feel like it is a lot closer. I feel like that has a lot to do. You know, obviously, nos cuentas eso de que tu mamá sentía con presión. I feel like it tends to happen a lot, which is not the right thing to do because at the end of the day, you're her daughter. Suele pasar mucho en donde para ella no pelearse con él, pues le sigue oh, la corriente. Yes. You know what I mean? So, nos platicas ya, you know, un poquito de tu novio. Yo quiero saber el chisme. Yo me acuerdo cuando yo te pedí que estuvieras en el podcast. Yo estaba en ese en vivo. La primerita persona que llamé Masters, I see la noticia fue a tu novio. And I was just so happy to see how excited he was for you. Que yo como soy un pinche chismoso, amiga, yo quiero saber cómo se conocieron, quién hizo el primer move, cómo pasó todo eso. Dame detalles. Um, we met a couple different ways. But the first way we met was that I was going through a healing. I had just gotten out of a toxic, toxic, toxic relationship. And I was in my healing era. It was like only two months three months where I was like healing and all that. And my friend was like, 
hey girl do you want to go to a baile like we need to go out together and i was like yes i want to go to a baile i was like of course so she's like okay i'll pick you up and i was like okay so me and her were in the car and we're like almost to the baile and i think como que she she waited to tell me because she was like oh um and i wanted to introduce you to someone and i was like who and she was like the singer and i was like no I was like, Melly, because that's her name. I was like, I don't want to know anyone. I don't want to meet anyone. I was like, thank you, but no thank you. I'm just not ready for that. So at that baile, um, it's so weird because at that baile, I was wearing red. Okay. And I recorded a little clip of me dancing. And he was singing in the background. And he was singing the song, um, La del monito rojo. Rojo. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yo me quiero yo casar. And I literally have just that clip, like, where he's saying that. And then I was wearing red. So I was like, what, now that we're dating, I look back at it and I'm like, oh my God. And that day I literally was like, I want nothing to do with this person. Y ahora aquí está, estaba contenta yeah. con él. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he popped up on my Facebook um, on Suggested and I sent her a screenshot. I was like, is this the guy you were talking about? She's like, yes, add him, add him. And I was like, okay. So I added him and then he added me on Instagram and then I added him on Snapchat. Or no, he added me on Snapchat. And then one day he like swiped up on my story and he invited me out to a party. And I had called that same friend. I was like, girl, are you going to this party? And he was like, she was like, yes, come with me. And I was like, okay. So I went with her and my boyfriend is shy. Okay. Like he is very, very, very shy. So... He took like an hour to get there. At that point, I was already like, no, like. No, ya empezamos mal. I was like, no, like he had took an hour to get there. But then he got there and I had noticed one guy walk through the door. Another guy walked through the door. And then the next guy that walked through the door, like I noticed that his hat, like I couldn't see his eyes. Like I couldn't see nothing of his face, just his hat. Todo estilo, todo de negro. Like I couldn't see anything of him. And I don't know why, but that clicked. I was like, that one. Like, I was like, okay, I want to know him now. Like, I don't know. He just gave me the vibe that he was so, like, not talkable. You know? Yeah. That I wanted to talk to Like, he to wasn't him. approachable. Yes. He didn't look approachable. Like, okay. He just looked so mysterious, literally. And I was like, you know what? I want to know him. Like, I want to know him. So then we sat down. We talked. I think we talked for, like, five minutes. And then my friends were like, we're leaving. And I was like, great. Well, they're my ride. So I have to go. So I left. And then we texted for a little bit. And at the time, we were young. I remember we texted for, like, a day. And then he was like, oh, how old are you? And I was like, oh, I'm 17. How old are you? He was like, guess. I was like, okay, well, he's a musico. Um, at the time, like, we would be at the parties where everyone, like, drinks and stuff. I was like, okay, he drinks. Um, he's tall. Like, I was just like, you know what? Like, you're no younger than 20. And then he told me he was 16. And I was like, oh, oh have a nice day. Yo en verdad pensaba que estaba más grande que tú. Yes. So he's like, oh, I'm 16. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I hope you have a nice day. Like, and ah, you're like, said, bye. Yeah. Ah. You were 17 at the time. Okay, okay. And then he left me on scene and then... A little bit later, like, this whole long love story happened, but our friends ended up setting us up. So we got set up on a date, a double date, and that day, like, it went perfect. Like, everything went perfect. I, I realized that day, I was like, oh, my God, like, I really, really, really like him. But again, I still wasn't ready. Like, I knew mentally that I was just not there. Like, yeah. I wasn't ready. Like, and you I, couldn't give him all of you. Yes, yeah, yeah, and I, the reason that I got scared is because I was like, okay, I really like him. But if I give it a try right now, I could potentially ruin something that could potentially be. So that day we went on the date. And it was so weird because neither of us texted each other. Like, we never talked again. Like, we didn't talk pa' nada. Literally. And it was, like, the best day ever. But he started posting stuff on Facebook, like, resharing stuff. Our date was at the beach. Okay. And he he started sharing stuff about the beach. And I was like... So I would reshare what he would share. And then on Facebook, we just kept going back and forth with indirectas. So that was the second attempt that we just, like, gave up. And then the third attempt, he swiped up on my story again. And from there, I was like, you know what? Let me talk to him. And now we've talked every day since. You're like, I can get past him being 16. <laughs> yes, That's crazy. So weird. Te pidió que fuera su novia? Like, how did that um, happen? Well, I had already went on like a family trip with him. So I had already met his family. I knew his sisters, like everything like that. And then I was like, oh, do you want to hang out today? Like, let's go get sushi and let's go to the beach with my friend and her boyfriend. And he was like, yes, like I would love to. And like his parents, lo dejaba. every time we would go out with me, like they were like, yes, yes, yes. Like, vete, vete, vete. Yes, like, yeah, yeah. we could always hang out. And that day he was like, you know, my parents are saying that I'm going out way too much and they don't want me to go. 
And I was like, oh, I was like, that sucks. Like, I was so sad. You're like, well, I'm still going. Yeah. Ah. I was already at my friend's house with her. So I was like, that sucks. Like, now I'm in the third wheel, you know? So I was third wheeling with my friends. And then we went to sushi. And then we were on our way to the beach. And I was in the back of the car. And my friend and her boyfriend were in the front. And then she was like, can you put this blindfold on? And I was like... I don't know why, but the first thing I thought, I was like, mm, please don't do nothing. Like, I was like, why am I putting a blindfold on? So I put it on and I was like, all right, well, can you at least turn the music up? You're like, no los quiero escuchar. Yes. Tú pensando que iban a hacer algo. Yeah, 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 I was yeah. like, because she was crazy. Yeah. So I was like, uh, like, I was super awkward. You're like, do you want me to just get off? Dude, yeah. I was like, I'll jump out the window. Like, it's okay. And then, like, after I put my, my blindfold on, I think, like, two minutes later, like, my heart dropped. Like, it literally, like, like fell out of my ass like I why like the anxiety scared. of being yes. blindfolded no because it clicked i was like oh my god she's taking me somewhere i was like he's about to ask me out <gasps> i literally like oh my goodness it my heart like it felt like it stopped beating i was so era so plan con maña. like he yes. was lying that like he couldn't go oh yes. okay, okay and then we went to the beach where we had the first date and then she was like, come out of the car. And her boyfriend had like a sports car. So she had to like put her seat down, get me out the back. It was all struggle. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm scared. And she was like, no, don't be scared because everything's going to be okay. Like, I promise. And then I just heard guitars, the tuba. Like, I heard him start singing um, the first song that he dedicated me. And then I took my blindfold off and he was there with like a big bear, a ramo, a sign. Aww. And he was singing. And it felt so weird. I was like, oh my God. You're like, no estoy impuesta a esto. <laughs> I was like, hold on, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but that's how he asked me. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, nos cuentas un poquito de tu noviazgo con tu novio, which I want to get back to that in a little bit. Pero mm -hmm. antes... Um, de que empezamos a hablar de esto, nos platicaste un poquito que you were in a toxic relationship before meeting him, which almost made you feel like you couldn't jump into another relationship because you were still healing. Um, cuéntanos un poquito más de eso. Um, well, I had gotten that relationship when I was really young. So I was 13. Oh, shit. So like middle school? No. Yeah, middle my school first, going, out of high, going think, into high yeah, school maybe? Yeah, my last year of middle school. And then it lasted until I was a senior. So oh, shit. that was like four years of my life. And I was very much used to that person. It was toxic. Like the relationship should have ended after probably not even the first year. Yeah, like the week. Ah. Yes, like it was bad. It was super, super bad. But I was just attached. Like I was just attached. I didn't know any better. Because of that person, I'm telling you that like my dad is my world. But because of that person, I even didn't talk to my dad for a year. Oh, shit. Yeah. No te dejaba hablar con él? It was just like my dad would know that he was a bad guy. But I would believe my th that mm. person over my dad, you know? So I didn't even talk to my dad. And then it came the day where he just broke up with me. Like, I don't know where. Like, he was just like, um, I don't want to do this no more. And I was like, so pretty. Because like, at that point, I didn't even know who I was. All I knew was that person. It was just like, I don't know. It was just somebody that I had there, but it was bad. Like, I knew we shouldn't have been in a relationship. But I couldn't let, like, I don't know. I was just super, super stuck. Super attached. He had broke up with me one day, like... De la nada, because we were supposed to go to um, my sister's birthday. I was like, are you coming? And he was like, no, I don't want to be with you anymore. <gasps> and I was like, wait, what? And then that's when I started going through a lot. Like after that breakup, well, again, like I couldn't even look in a mirror because yo, like I couldn't recognize myself. I couldn't look in a mirror. I couldn't eat. Like I got super, super, super depressed, like super depressed. I had lost, I think like 15, 20 pounds. Oh shit. Yeah, I was super tiny. I got super tiny and I've always been more like, like I've always had me, you know, like been a four in jeans. But when that happened, I was like a double zero. I don't know. I was just super out of place. And then my mom saw how I was getting and she called my dad because she knows that like my dad is the only person that could get through me. And she was like, come for, come for your daughter because she's going through something like I wouldn't get out of bed. I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't shower. My room was a mess. And so my dad called me and he's like, hi, mommy, I'm going to go pick you up. And I was like, OK. He was like, pack clothes because you're going to stay with me. And I was like, OK. All I packed was pyjamas and like. I loved doing my makeup at the time. Like, I was such a makeup girl. Like, I loved being cute. But I was going through so much that all I packed was pyjamas. Like, literally, I packed just, like, full on got clothes. And then when my dad picked me up, he, like, held my hand. And he was like, what's going on? Again, like this. Like, yeah. My dad always holds my hand like that. So, I was like, what's going on? And then, like, right there, I just burst it. And my dad knew. He, like, knew what happened. So, the whole ride from my mom's all the way up until my dad's. He was just contando me stuff. He was like, mija, ¿tú crees que yo no manejaba todo este freeway llorando? Like, he was like, ¿y tú ni sabías? Like, he was like, tú atrás y yo enfrente llorando. He was like, because 
I went through this. He was like, I went through heartbreak. I know how it feels. I know it feels like your whole world is gone. He's like, but that's not how it is because look at me now. Look at what you're going through. Look at what I went through. And he was like, but look at me now. Like he, he already had his family, his kids. My dad has bought his properties, like all that, you know. So my dad's doing extremely good and... I thought about it and I was like, you know what, like my dad's right. And he was just telling me so much advice that I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I would have, I could have recorded the whole call. That's why when girls ask me for advice now, I give them what my dad tells me. Yeah. Like I'm like, stop investing so much time into that person and invest it into you. Like I always tell people, I'm like, instead of giving this same person a chance, give yourself a, a chance. chance. Like, give yourself a chance to live life, to be yourself, to learn what you love. Because that's what my dad had always told me. So he took me to his house, and then he was, like, giving me a hug. And he was like, I love you. And the, he always told me, he was like, the only person in life that you need is your dad. And even when I went through the situation where, like, my stepdad was attacking me, like, and he was like, nadie cree en ti. When I told my dad about that, he was like... Para la otra que es, él te diga eso, tú dile que me hable a mí. He was like, para que yo le diga que su papá cree en ella, you know? Aww. Like, yeah, my dad has always been the type, like, you don't need anyone but your dad. You don't need anyone but me. Like, mientras yo esté vivo, tú no ocupas, like, de nadie más. So he helped me a lot, and then I got there to his house. And he was like, oh, y prepárate porque no te me vas a ir hasta que tú te sientes chingona. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'm going to be here a while. You're like, damn, and I'm moving in. Yeah, 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 so I was there. And then right there, I had lost all my relationships with my sisters. Because, again, I was so focused on that yeah. with toxic relationship that I didn't, like, I lost my relationship with my sisters. And when I moved back in, my relationship with them, like, it grew so much. Like, so 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 much and then after a little bit when i started talking to my current boyfriend like my sisters were just so involved like oh alex he says alex is alex is and i would always send him pictures of my sisters and i would be like i'm so sorry you're gonna come into this life like my sisters are crazy you're like, like prepárate yes yeah, yeah, yeah. like they are crazy i have one sister she's 14 the other is 12 and then the other is turning nine this month mm. and then i have a little brother that's three so we have like a, over there it's a full house like the you, whole little village yeah, yes, yeah, yeah you go there it's never quiet like there's always noise going on so i grew my relationship with them but while i was over there i still went through a lot because like i had mentioned i had lost a lot of weight mm -hmm. when i went through that and again i had always been more yanita like i always had like I was just always more yenita, you know? And then when I had lost so much weight, like, I was wearing... At the time, my sister was 11, and I was wearing her pants. <gasps> like, I was tiny. I had lost a lot of weight. But then when I um, lived with my dad and I found myself love again, when you lose weight in that way, when you gain it back, you gain it back plus more. Yeah. Always. And, like, in a good way, too. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, always. But I had gained it all back plus half. Like, so I had gained, I think, like, 30 pounds. Like okay. 30 pounds. And so that put me into a really, 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 really bad, dis like, body dysmorphia state that I started forcing myself to throw up. Like, after every single meal, I would throw it up. Yeah. Everything. It didn't matter if it was fruta, cereal, steak. Salad. Salad. If I would drink a smoothie, eat an ice cream cone, I would go. And this is when I was living with my dad. So I would go... And just like throw it all throw over it everything. And I, when I started dating my boyfriend, he noticed. And he's like, why are you always throwing up? Like you're always throwing up. That he even took me to the hospital. And I literally lied to the doctors. I was what like, did I you don't say? Know. I was just like, I don't know. You're like, me da asco. Yeah, ah. I literally said Pero that. Pero no te daba asco. You would just kind of like make yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put my fingers <gasps> and force myself, to, like, force myself to the throw up to the point where like, like my face would get red like yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. even would your come eyes out. bloodshot red yes, yeah, 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 nothing yeah. would come out but i was so in a bad body dysmorphia state with myself in such a bad like like i treated myself so bad at that yeah. time like i was like oh my god like you gained all this weight you look horrible oh and at that time i had gained really bad like i think it was fungal acne but it was like all over my cheeks all over my forehead and it was like itchy infected acne so i had really bad acne i had gained a lot of weight so i me within myself like after my healing self-care like i was the prettiest ever You're I like was, i hate it, myself yeah it went it went down fast like i think i only lasted like two months where i felt good and then after that that healing journey lasted me about a year. And not even my family knew that I would throw up. No one knew. And I remember one time when I was at my mom's, I threw up. And I got out and she was like, did you throw up? 
And I was like, no, I was brushing my teeth. Like, I lied to her. But my mom would notice too. But And it was crazy because even though I did all that to myself, I didn't lose a single pound. Not one freaking yeah. pound. Like, I was that stressing you out more, obviously? Like, you were doing all that with the purpose of you maybe losing weight was it even stressing you out more putting you more in a state of mind where you're like fuck even this is not helping i still feel horrible i still feel ugly i still feel fat or whatever it was yes it did like i would go to the gym i would throw up i would starve myself and i, I remember one time i was at my boyfriend's house and he was like i'm gonna weigh myself because he was actually he was trying to gain weight okay and he weighed himself and then i weighed myself and it said I had gained two pounds, I think, and I broke down. Like I was like, I never want to step on another scale. It like dicho y hecho, I didn't. I like the only time I ever weigh myself is when I go to the doctor. Oh, okay. And even my boyfriend tells me he's like, don't look, don't look, don't. He look like just let them write it down. Yeah, he's like, don't look. But yeah, I was in like so It was super bad. I feel like body dysmorphia. You know, I've gone through body dysmorphia all my life even now that i can say i'm at my thinnest i feel like i've been having body dysmorphia even crazier like maybe like the mm -hmm. past month um and obviously you know a lot of it is mind games you know you probably looked great or oh, yeah. you know if you look back at pictures you're like oh maybe i wasn't that no, big yes. or maybe you oh you were no i no, look no, no. back at it yeah. and, I'm and you're like, like oh shit it's a lot of mind games yes. you know was there ever a moment where you're like you know what hasta aquí. I'm going to stop worrying about the scale. I'm going to stop worrying about the mirror. I'm going to start worrying more about loving myself. Yes, it was my little sister. She would always be like, oh, like, I'm, I get bullied because I'm fat. Or like, because she's like, her and my other sisters are very different. Okay. So she would always come up to me and be like, oh, I'm getting bullied. Like, I walked in on her crying one time and I was like, what's wrong? And she was like, I'm fat. And she was like, five. Oh my God. And I yeah. was like, what like i was like why are you like i was like you're beautiful like where are you getting this yes, from yes yeah, i was yeah. like you are so beautiful and like to this day she'll wear shorts and she'll get embarrassed and i'll be like what's wrong and she's like i just wish this was smaller and i'm like but no like no and so it was one time i remember she she had told me she hugged me and she was like my sister's so pretty i wanted to be just like my sister and then uh, that clicked because i was like imagine she sees me like Forcing myself to throw up. Like, what example would I put for yeah. her, you know? You're a good friend. <sighs> so that was that was my breaking point. I was like, I say that my sisters are my world and they are. Why am I doing this? Yeah. When they see me as such a role model. They like, look up to me. Yes. Yeah. So never threw up again from that day. Like, when she told me that, I never threw up again. I was, And he, my boyfriend even told me, he was like... Imagine your little sister saw, saw you. Because I used to talk down on myself a lot. Like, I used to say a lot of mean things to myself in front of my boyfriend, too. And he would be like, imagine your little sister was watching you right now. And it changed my whole mindset. Like, I started being so nice to myself. Now, I eat whatever I want. If I don't want to go to the gym, I'm not going. And if I do go to the gym, I'm still going to tragar. Like, now, if I have a craving... I'm so gentle on my body. I'm so nice to myself that I eat it. I never make myself feel guilty for eating anymore. Like, if I don't want to go to the gym, I'm like, you know what? I don't have to go to the gym. Like, yeah. I look good. I'm beautiful. I will look at myself in the mirror and I will literally be like, I'm literally that girl. Like, I'm so pretty. Like, I'm just... Mm, from one day to the other, my mind, like, switched. Like, and that's amazing to. to hear because you are, you know, you're worth yeah. everything. And a veces, you know, we let our mind kind of make us believe something that isn't, you mm -hmm. know. And I'm glad that you had your little sister to help you realize yes. que vales más de lo que tú pensabas obviamente you know platicamos de esto which for a lot of people maybe at home it can be a sensitive topic um, pero es tu realidad es tu vida es lo que te yeah. pasó que es a piece of advice que tú a la gente que nos está mirando en casa that maybe are going through that or have currently gone through that what's something now that you that you've overcome it what's a piece of advice you can give them I would say whatever you're going through right now, like it might be super hard. It might be like the only thing on your mind. It might be bringing your whole world down. But one day you will be able to help somebody with the pain that you go through. Like I've always thought that because like, like I said now, like I used to go through so many bad things and now I, I switch it and now 
I can raise my little sister to be nice on herself because yeah. I went through it. Even another example, like how I always felt so lonely at like school musicals, this and that. You know, my little sister's dad left them. Yeah. So I had to go through that lonely feeling so that they could have my dad, you know? And it's like you lose some and you win some. Because I look back at it now and I'm like, you know what? I would go through it all over again if it means that my sister still yeah. get my dad. So whatever pain you go through, you'll go through it. But when it gets better, you'll help yourself and you will be able to help other people. And when you put self-love out to other people, you get it back. Yeah. Like you get that and much more. Like... I don't know. I just feel like God will puts everyone through their path for a reason. Exactly. I feel like self love is super important. What are things you do that help you practice it? Like maybe on the daily, like because I know my my sister in law, she. Um, kind of went through maybe not like similar to you but maybe she's always felt like everyone kind of hated her like her family and she's gone through toxic relationships and there was a time where it got really dark for her and now that she's like in her self journey la miro que en, en su baño she has like little postcards like oh, you're yeah. beautiful you're worth it you're this you're that para acordarse yeah. ella what are tips for you that have helped you you know in this self love journey um definitely speaking nice about yourself and you have to start off slow like back then i would i would pull myself apart so much and i i like i would literally look in the mirror and be like okay this is bad this is bad this is bad but starting off even like the smallest little change helps like it started off for me i would look in the mirror and i would be like you know what i don't really like this over here but I like this over here. Or like, it started with me and my boyfriend. I, if I would say something bad about myself, he would be like, all right, now say something good. Like, all right, you got the bad thing, now you could say something good. And for for a few months, it was like that, I'd say, maybe even a year, a little over a year. But then it just kind of shifted to like, I just stopped talking about the bad. Like, I just started talking about the good. Like, sometimes I'll look at him and I'll be like, I'm bomb. And he's like, yeah, you are. <laughs> like, little things yeah, like that. Yeah, like, you yeah, are yeah, a girl. Yeah. Like, yes. Like, he's hyping you yes, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yes. Like, finally, you realize that. Or even with my friends, like, the people you surround yourself with has a lot to do. Because yeah. I used to have a best friend that was so negative. And it was negative in, like, little jokes where, like, some parts of her kept me humble. But other parts was just, like, like, she's coming for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. You know, like, it was just, like, way too much. So, I, I was best friends with her. Like, best, best, best friends. And from, this might sound a little harsh, but from one day to the other, I was just like, I can't with you. Like, yeah. you're making me feel bad about myself, and I have to, you have to put yourself first. If you want self-love, girl, you have to put yourself first. Like, yeah. you have to cut the toxic people out, cut the toxic words out. You have to cut all that. And it'll it'll come. With time, it will come. And I feel like that's something very important, especially when it comes to surrounding yourself with positive people. Yeah. Because if you're surrounding yourself with negativity or with people that are so negative or people that don't want to see you succeed, it almost makes it normal for you to be in that bad mental state. You know what I mean? Oh, yes, definitely. Also, I feel like you are what you give. Yeah. I always tell people that. I'm like, if you're going to give out negative energies, if you're going to be rude, if you're going to, whatever it is, manipulating, gaslighting, it's going to come back to yeah. you. Like, you are what you give. And I feel like you are what you give, but you get it back times 10. Yeah. Like, you get it back so much worse. So that's why I always tell, I, like, just be nice. Be nice and You'll feel nice. Nos brincamos un poquito y quiero regresar a un tema, you know, nos platicabas un poquito de tu actual relación. Being in that toxic relationship que nos acabas de contar about earlier, do you feel like that affected you in the way you approached your new relationship or do you feel like it affected you in any way, like maybe los traumas que cargabas de tu otra relación? Do you feel like at one point, maybe in the beginning, te los trajiste with your new relationship? Oh my gosh, yes. But in a good way. Okay. Like, all those traumas and everything, I kind of took them and I, like, I was like, all right. I, that's why I cut him off. Or not cut him off, but that's why I I didn't give him the chance for so long. Because I was like, I'm not ready. Like, I don't want to get in another relationship and bring my toxic habits into this one. So, yeah, when we, like, when we started dating, antes, like, in my past, I was, like, I was just super toxic. So, it was, like, there was jealousy. There was, like verbal abuse yeah. like it was super bad so and when i got in my next relationship he was he was actually funny sorry he was actually a main chambelan okay. like 15. 
And he would be like, oh, like, I can get out. Like, he's like, I'll, I'll leave. And I was like, no, like, how would you leave a, a quinceañera, like, with no chamelan? But he would be like, no, if it makes you uncomfortable, I'll get out. And I was like, no, like, I don't care, you know? And then, like, his mom would always tell me, she would be like, how are you not celosa? And I would be like, it's because I know what it can get to. Yeah. Like, I know how bad jealousy can get. And it could cause a lot of bad things. So I was just trying, trying, trying to just like, no, like, do your thing. Like, I don't care. I You're don't like, maybe care. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was like, yeah. But my sagra would always tell me, she would be like, no, like, sometimes jealousy is needed. My sagra was like, always on my team. She was like, like, tell him to get out. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Was, on plate, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, she was always like, telling me that it was okay to be a little jealous. And then I was like, oh, okay. So... Then I started being a little jelly. <laughs> what do you yeah. feel like, you know, obviamente going from a toxic relationship to a healthy one, what is a piece of advice you can give to those watching at home that are currently going through a toxic relationship where they see no way out? Definitely what I tell a lot of people is you cannot start to love someone else if you don't love yourself. Like if you're getting out of this toxic relationship or you're in this toxic relationship and you find that you have no self-love for yourself, before you get into another relationship y te entregas toda, find your self-love. Like find pieces of you that you know, like make sure you know how to be alone. Yeah. Like that's just something that I feel like everybody needs. Everybody needs to know that they could take care of themselves. Everybody needs to know that they have, at the end of the day, they have themselves. So before you're going to like go from one thing to the other, Just make sure you have yourself. Yo quiero saber un poquito de la actualidad. So, obviamente ahorita en redes sociales te miramos para arriba, <laughs> para abajo, para el centro y para adentro. Pero obviamente no siempre fue así. ¿Cómo empezó todo esto? How did you start social media? ¿O qué fue lo que te inspiró para decir, sabes qué? Me quiero empezar a grabar y hacer esto. I feel like literally ever since I was a little girl, like back when my dad had a Blackberry phone, like the one that yeah, had the yeah, little bola yeah. that you could move around. Oh my God, I had the Metro one. I never had a Blackberry. My brother did, but I had like the Metro wannabe Blackberry yeah. one. Do you remember or no? No, I don't. Oh my God, maybe because you're younger. Yeah. I'm 25 going on 26. Yeah, antes tenían como un Blackberry mm. that Metro would give everyone for free. If you know, you know, because you guys <laughs> probably had it. It was, it was like everyone's first phone. But anyways, yeah. uh-huh. So like ever since he had that, I would just run around the house, like, take his phone and record stuff. Or, like, ever since I was little, I was just always recording myself. I always wanted to, like, I just love, always love being in front of the camera, literally since I was little. And then when I was in elementary school, I had a friend that she loved doing the same thing. And we would actually post on YouTube, but my mom would get mad at me. Like, she would say that I was too young, you know? So she would stop letting me go to her house. Like, I couldn't go to her house. And then... Going into high school, I always, always, everything like that, everyone sees on TikTok, I would film all of that, but on my Snapchat. Okay. And I would post it on my, um, what's it called? Like, your private story. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it only had like 15 people, but to the ones that know, they know. Like, they would always swipe up my stories and be like, I love your hauls, I love this, I love that. So I always, always knew that, like, this is what I want to do, and I'm gonna do it. I always knew that. But since I had, I've struggled a lot, like with mental health, with family, with this, with that. It was just one thing after another where I felt like I was never in the right place to actually like be committed and go into it. But now that I have my own place, I have my own money, like I can invest into my cameras, my setup and all that. So yeah, that's how I got into it. ¿Qué fue el momento para ti donde dijiste, sabes que I can actually do this full time? Like, when was the moment where you maybe even started getting more acknowledgement? Nos cuentas de Itati, nos cuentas de cuando empezaste a ganar tu dinerito. But before you started making, you know, that money, was there ever a moment where you're like, fuck, people are noticing me. People are seeing my videos because obviously I'm sure when you first started, when you were like a little girl, it was maybe like uno que otras vistas, you know, it was like you were starting off. Was there a moment for you where you were like, Like, oh shit, like there's actually people that like watching me. I'd say it was, I, I went to a concert and I think this was my first time. Well, girls would come up to me like at the mall or here or there, but it was always like one, one girl or and, like a couple weeks later, another girl. But then I went to a concert and like six girls, like one after the other, after the other, they just like, can I have a picture with you? Like I watch you on TikTok. And I was with my cuñada and my cuñada was just like, oh my God, like that is super cool. And I was like, yes, of course. And then I went to another concert and 
As soon as I walked in, I just heard Sophie. And I'm blind, really okay. blind. Oh, okay, so okay. I feel like people think I'm rude because I'm always like, who said that? Like, I'm always squinting my eyes. Like, where are they? So I was like, oh, my God. I literally said, I was like, I can't see you, but I hope you don't think I'm being rude. I just can't see. And then after that, um, we actually caused a little bit of, like, traffic when people were trying to get out because there were just so many girls coming up to me. So that was the moment where I was like, oh, my goodness, like, the fact that people in my state are coming up to me is like crazy. Especially I because I feel like at that moment you're like, oh shit, this is real. Because I feel yeah. like a veces cuando miramos que even if you get like a hundred K views, a million, sometimes like you don't grasp that those numbers are actual people. Yes. Like sometimes even yeah. me, like when I think about like, oh my God, that video did amazing. But like, you don't think about like, oh my God, a million people sat down and like watched that video. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So I feel like when you see it in person, you're like, no mames, esos números son personas en realidad. No, yeah, because one of my, my most viewed video is like 7 million views yeah. on it. And I think about it and I'm like, I was thinking about Taylor Swift's, how she sold out like, yeah, Worldwide and like one stadium is like what five five hundred thousand people. I don't know much about stadiums. I think a stadium is like sixty thousand. Sixty. So imagine 000? even yes, sixty thousand views. Like sometimes to like in the influencing world, that may be like oh that video flopped. But you think about it like that, and you're like damn that's. Hella yeah, like people. concerts. I don't even think there's a lot of fucking concert venues that hold even a hundred thousand dollars i'm like five hundred thousand like pues en donde vives amiga yo quiero ver ese stadium no it's crazy when see, you think but about it you see it. that's what i'm saying like even that number like i thought it was this much yeah like, it's crazy so lo bueno que ya estás agarrando you know a lot of exposure yeah. muchas de tus girls como te digo y te dije en el principio your girls are so in love with you miro tus en vivos y ahí están todas entretenidas seeing what's up with you what's coming up with you that yeah. i literally feel so happy to have you here y Estoy muy contento que te sentiste cómoda enough to talk about your story, to tell your story, to be raw, because sometimes it's scary, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Especially because estando en lo que hacemos, uno nunca sabe cómo la gente lo va a recibir. So I'm very happy que tú te sientas cómoda y te sientas contenta enough Thanks. to, you know, share your life and share your story. You know, yeah. ya para terminar la entrevista, yo te quiero preguntar algo que siempre termino la plática with. Um, ¿En dónde te miras tú en los próximos cinco años? Where do you see sophie going in the next five years oh in the next five years definitely continuing with social media the way i want to get just more into it a lot of people say that oh you you overshare but that's what i want yeah. like i want people to know that life is live like i don't want people to just see me at the good times like i want people to see me when i'm at my lowest that's why when i have bad days i still feel my get ready with me so i'm like i feel like shit today but i want you guys to know that you're not alone if you feel like this too yeah so definitely still doing social media getting a lot more into it buying property i want to build my dad owns his construction business and my dream is always to have my dad construct my dream Aww. home so buying property Having kids. I want a lot of kids. A los cuantos años quieres? Un chamaquillo. She's like, now. She's all announcing her. It's all in that pregnancy announcement. She's like, actually. Oh my God, did you say Kelly Uchi's announced her pregnancy today? No, I heard it. I literally saw it, which is so funny because I'm getting off track. No, but if anyone is a Kelly Uchi's fan, I'm actually, I'm meeting her today. I'm going to her release party later tonight. And this morning, my boyfriend comes up and he's like, did you see? And I was like, what? Kelly Uchi? she's just pregnant i had been knowing bitch but not because like any bts stuff like in every single especially with the video with um carol g no enseñaba la panza no estaba enseñando el cuerpo se estaba escondiendo atrás de los bailarines I so that. i knew i had a feeling too but you know how when people are like oh is this person pregnant a lot of people are like oh my god you're so rude like this and that so i like, never verbally said yeah, it. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah i never yeah. verbally said it either but i had a feeling too because the way she would just hide herself she and then a lot of people would say that she was lo low energy like yeah i went to her concert which was amazing mm -hmm. uh but it was when she first started wearing those big poofy dresses. the poofy dresses yes. and i remember since that time i kind of had an idea because i think she's almost giving birth no irma That's yeah like crazy. she's like literally like she's busting a kylie <laughs> on us too which is amazing because today salió su album oh my so goodness. perfectamente so I, like, she knew what she was she doing she knew marketing queen <laughs> but go but anyway sorry i literally got oh, sidetracked no, okay. with pregnancy okay. pero todos los cuantos años te miras honestly i'd say um in two years i've always wanted to have kids like 
be a mom. Like I, when I was a nanny with my little siblings, I love babies. I love kids. And a lot of people are like, oh, but that's like, wait, like at least six more years. Do this, do that. And I'm like, but that's like what I want. Yeah. Like I've always just wanted that. Of course I want to travel and everything. But people make it seem like you can't travel with like kids. Or que tu vida se te acabó. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, yeah. no, like that's not the case. And I feel like I feel that way because I grew up so alone. Yeah. I feel like I feel that way because I never had the mommy and daddy figure. So that's just what I want to live. Like I want to. You, know, you want to give someone what you were able to yes, have. Yes, but sé que yes. Vas a ser una mamá excelente. But I'm not saying that. I'm like, she's like, I'm not saying right now. Years, no, but it's like I, maybe five, but yes, pronto, pues. Quieres yes, no no pronto, pero en un futuro. Te miras teniendo hijos y yo sé que cuando tengas tus hijos propios, yo sé que tú vas a ser una mamá maravillosa. And I know you're gonna you. treat them the way you would have wished you yes. would have been treated. You know, so muchas gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Yo sé que a ustedes les encantó ahí en casita esta entrevista. And once again, thank you so much for being vulnerable, for coming on here and having a conversation with me. Y en verdad dejarnos aquí tu corazón y, y lo que eres tú en verdad. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a chance because this is my I made it moment. Oh, like, this thank is you. my my moment so thank you apenas va empezando amigas yo le voy a dar el puchón y ella solita is gonna reach success yes. pero muchas gracias once again if you guys don't already follow her ahí les voy a dejar todo down below as well as on the screen y no se les olvide para seguirme a mí so you guys won't miss any future episodes and with that being said thank you once again thank you and thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one bye guys yes. you look so good I love it